How is it going everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video and as you can see I've been adjusting the uh, camera settings just a little bit trying to get a little bit better quality out of it. Let me know what you guys think and please never mind the wind. It's a bit uh, breezy outside but today we're looking at old Smokey here <laughs> and uh, we're gonna look at uh, a topic that I've been asked multiple times. Why is there water in the old pan? So <laughs> let's get into it. So I'm using uh, the 95 extended cab uh, three-quarter ton truck that I have gotten running, I'm gonna say, uh, that I bought for uh, $1,400 for this video because it has cooling in the old pan. So this is a perfect time to go through it. So what does it mean when you have coolant in the old pan? Well, it means that water or coolant is getting into the crankcase or into the bottom of the engine. Whether it be a cracked block or a blown head gasket, somehow, some way, coolant is getting into the old pan. And without completely tearing it down or running through some diagnosis, um, you'll, you won't know whether it's a cracked block or a bad head gasket. To show you an example of what it looks like uh, in the early stages of having coolant or water in the old pan, we're going to pull the dipstick. And you can kind of see there on the very end, uh, there's a little bit of milkiness. Not super bad, but uh, luckily I caught it in time before it decided to destroy the engine. You can kind of see it a little better right there. Uh, possibly not. I just restuck it and you can see right there in the middle of the screen there's uh, some milky tint to it. So why do I say I caught it in time? Well if you were to continue to run uh, your engine with coolant in the oil pan basically your entire oiling system has to go through all the passages of the engine and it goes into your main bearings, your cam bearings, your uh, connecting rod bearings, and up to the pistons. If you have coolant or water in the oil pan, that is going through all that system. And if you don't watch it over time, the lubricity of the oil begins to deteriorate and you're going to either spin main bearings, uh, spin cam bearings, you're going to wipe them out uh, any way you look at it, and it's going to destroy your engine. Luckily, I caught this one in time, so it didn't do that, and I can fix the issue before it becomes an even bigger issue. Now, I say the two probable causes are likely that it's either a crack block or a blown head gasket. If it if you have a cracked block, your block is immediately going to fill with every ounce of coolant that you have in the engine, um, or at least fill the cylinder. So if your piston is above the crack, uh, it's going to leak down into the oil pan. If it's below the crack, then you're going to eventually hydro lock your engine. If water's getting on top of your piston, you go to crank it. Uh, if enough water is there, you're eventually going to hydro lock your engine, which is a whole mess of other problems. So, and that can occur with a bad head gasket too, if it's completely blown out. Uh, that's not to say that you know, these are the only reasons why this happened. It's just to give you guys an idea of what may be going on with your engine. Another tall tale sign that you may be having a bad head gasket issue or even a cracked block issue. And I think this should go without saying, you're obviously losing coolant. <laughs> I hate that I have to say that, but I've got some, uh, some guys in the comments that they're, it's common sense isn't all there so obviously if you have a bad head gasket or uh you're getting coolant in the oil pan obviously your your low coolant light's gonna come on because it's going someplace it's not supposed to be <laughs> so uh, pretty common sense stuff but uh it's unfortunate that i have to say that or i get some keyboard warriors in the comments that are like oh you, you forgot something <laughs> well i'm human i forget <laughs> i forget shit sometimes in my case unfortunately it's a bad head gasket um it's not too terrible uh 
that it is a bad head gasket being that I don't have to buy an engine block. But uh, the reason why I know, or I know for sure that it's a bad head gasket, number one, I over boosted it without head studs. So this engine does not have head studs. You can look right down here, right next to your injector. That is a bolt, not a stud. To give you guys an idea of what a stud looks like, if you're looking at buying a truck and somebody says, oh, I head studded it, uh, it should look like this down here. So you have the stud itself and then you have the nut, uh, tall tail sign that it's been head studded. Whether or not the previous owner or a shop did it right, uh, leave that to your discretion. But uh, my extended cab has not been head studded. So uh, the head bolts, I would say, uh, when I over boosted it, pretty well stretched. And then uh, unfortunately the head gasket between the head and the block decided to uh, break in between the combustion chamber or where your cylinder sits or your piston sits in the cylinder into the water jacket of the engine. Hard telling uh, right now, because I haven't torn it apart, which cylinder it may be, but uh, either way, that gasket just let loose when I unfortunately over boosted it. Now, that is entirely my fault. Uh, not saying it's the only issue that's going on with my tr uh, extended cab, but uh, when I took the turbo off of that big girl back there, uh, I never backed down the wastegate on the turbo and I never put a boost gauge on it to let me know how much boost it was getting. So unfortunately, uh, I created my own problem. <laughs> Another reason why I know that uh, it's more than likely a blown head gasket is that um, the upper coolant hose, anytime I leave the uh, cap on the coolant reservoir tight, the uh, upper coolant hose is solid as a rock and I know it's getting into the combustion chamber because I can verify the uh, color of the smoke that is coming out of the tailpipe. Another reason being is I can drive around all day long with the coolant cap uh, loose and it doesn't pressurize, it doesn't bi uh, burn any coolant or anything like that. So that so that pretty well alleviates the idea that it was a crack block. If it was a crack block it would be doing it all the time. I would be just constantly getting uh, more and more water into the oil pan. Uh, every time that piston went up in the combustion chamber, a little bit more coolant would leak into the oil pan. Um, it, it being only when the engine gets hot and the coolant system is pressurized, then the coolant is able to get into the uh, combustion chamber and leak past the rings. So. Also to verify uh, which side could be the bad head gasket, um, I'm not going to waste my time to uh, determine which side it is, but if you wanted to, if you were cheap and only wanted to replace one head gasket, uh, you could on these uh, earlier model 6.5, so 95 and older, uh, they have a single thermostat housing. You could take this cap off of the thermostat housing um, let the coolant kind of settle, start up the engine, and when the engine gets hot, you should be able to see either bubbles coming from this side of the coolant passage or this side of, I'm sorry, not the coolant passage, but the thermostat housing. That will determine whether it is on the passenger side or the driver side of the engine. Uh, again, if you're going to do head gaskets, you may as well just do them both because the other one is surely to go bad not too long after. I don't recommend replacing just one head gasket and while you're in there you might as well uh, go ahead and get some head studs because why would you go back with bolts uh, if they just have the potential to stretch again or if you know it's an extra mm, 120 bucks to go with head studs and then you can alleviate that issue and uh, make more modifications to the engine without worrying about whether they're gonna hold or not. So unfortunately, uh, <laughs> upon my own doing, uh, this 
This truck does unfortunately need head gaskets. It seems like I'm always doing head gaskets on 6.5s, whether it's my own doing or it's because trucks have 250,000 miles and weren't taken care of by the previous owner or uh, you know, just improving the overall um, longevity by doing head studs in 6.5s. So unfortunately I will be doing head studs and uh, going back with uh, some Felpro gaskets. Um, again, unfortunate, but it's the nature of the beast. And if you're gonna have as many vehicles as I do, they're gonna come with this use. <laughs> so uh, I hope that answers your question of why you might be getting uh, cooling in the old pan. Let me know what you guys think, what other things you guys have run into in the past. Uh, we will be continuing on the wife's crew cab here uh, probably next week. Uh, I bought some other stuff uh, for it that uh, uh, I'm a little pissed off about, but uh, we'll fix it nonetheless. So take care, guys, and we will catch you in the next one.